Hey guys, welcome to Sketch Today. I'm Spencer. I'm an industrial designer. I've been doing this for a long time. And by this, I mean drawing and teaching people about drawing. And if you found the channel, welcome. Definitely hit subscribe, turn on alerts. If you're coming back and you haven't done that yet, shame on you. Just kidding. Um, we go live three times a week and I don't want you to miss out on that. We go live Wednesdays, Fridays and Sundays. So you'll want to subscribe, turn on alerts. Come say hi on the socials. I'm at sketchaday.com on Instagram or at daily sketches on Twitter. So today I'm going to be doing something I've been putting on for some time now, and that is reviewing the Gaoman, Gaoman, Gaoman PD1161, this tablet. It's still in the box. It's been sitting here for a while now, and it's incredibly cheap. Now, I don't usually buy cheap things, but I've kind of been on this kick with markers and looking into cheap markers, and I figured it was time to take a look at something competitive with Wacom. I haven't drawn on my desktop in a bit. I tend to use my iPad Pro, so this will be interesting, and we're just gonna go for it and see how I feel about it. So we're just gonna go for it, and I'll hopefully answer some questions you might have and give you a sense of what 180 bucks or so can get you in terms of a drawing tablet. The packaging is actually pretty nice. The printing is uh, a little bit suspect. Nice feel to the packaging. So it does feel like something you may have paid twice as much for, which is kind of nice. All right, so here's the package. It's pretty good so far. This is a very light package. And I believe this is the 11 inch display. I don't need a huge display next to my computer. So I just wanted something small and so far, I mean, in terms of the hardware quality, it feels pretty good. The tablet is very, very widescreen. So we'll see how this works with my Mac Pro and display here. In the package, we have the battery free stylus, and this should be similar to a Wacom stylus if you use one of those, at least that's what they say. So I'm gonna be testing this out and let you know what I think. Um, initial thought is that it feels really light. So I'm a little concerned about the pen here, but we'll see how it performs. We also have this cable bundle. I believe this is the AV connectors. So we've got HDMI here that kind of changes into this whole thing. So we've got USB, HDMI, and power, which is familiar. That's kind of how the Cintiq works. And we have, oh, this is nice. So this power connector here actually snaps in. So you just plug it in like this, like so, and twist. And now that is connected. Oops. Plug it in and twist, click. So now this won't disconnect, um, which is kind of nice. This reminds me a bit of my uh, live production switcher that I use. It has a threaded kind of uh, capture so you don't inadvertently unplug it. So that's kind of nice. All right, see what else is in the box. We've got a little stand for the tip here and a way to remove that tip. So I'm gonna set this to the side and we have our power connector for this guy. It looks like it's made or meant to uh, accept a bunch of different adapters. So I'm just gonna plug this in, little twist, nice click. So I know that this is securely in. If you push this button, it looks like that comes off. So kind of a nice feature. And I went ahead and downloaded the driver and I'll talk a little bit about that in a sec, but it doesn't seem like there really was much to install. Um, it's just kind of running right now. So let's power this thing up and we'll go from there. So I went ahead and connected the tablet and I just want to call out a few things. So a couple of things. There are two cables that are required to hook up the tablet. So you'll want to be mindful of that if you have a tight working space. So far, my gut feeling is this is, I mean, it, it's pretty bare bones. It does the job, but there are some trade-offs. Now it does have a USB-C connector that goes to this multi-out cable on the far left but you do have a USB-C and HDMI connected to your tablet that will have to be on the desk. Also of note, there is no sort of stand or means of uh, 
propping this up at an angle. So just in my initial setup, I kind of found myself placing the palm of my hand behind the tablet. Now, for me, it's not a big deal because that's kind of how I use my iPad anyways. And the reason for getting this tablet was really just for me to create some Photoshop brushes for you guys, Shh, super top secret. But that being said, I will say the differences in quality between this device and something like a Wacom tablet are to me immediately apparent. I haven't used a Wacom in a while, but I know the quality, I know the attention to detail, and I, I feel like there's some corners that have been cut here. Also of note, the stylus itself has a very springy, spongy tip, and there's not really a way for me to adjust that that I've discovered yet. I'll have to dig in some more, as this is more of a first take video than a, an in-depth review. So we'll revisit this after I've spent a bit more time with the tablet. As far as the viewing angle, color reproduction, and all of that go, I would give it a passing grade. So like a C if, or C plus, D plus, if I were grading this. And the reason for that is the off axis viewing angle on this display, immediately you have a bit of fall off. So what I mean is the screen goes a little hazy if you're sitting at an angle. So I think if you're gonna use this tablet, make sure that you are positioned in a way that is directly in front of it. Now, as far as the resolution goes, it is advertised at 1920 by 1080, which means you're not getting a retina or high super ultra 4K screen resolution from this. So if you're an artist who cares about resolution, that's something you might want to consider. However, for the price, a little over $170 is what I got this for brand new. It's pretty good considering a Cintiq, something that is really this gold standard of digital tablet displays costs many times more than this Gaumon IPS tablet display. Now, jumping into Photoshop here, which is what I'm using right here, um, I've noticed that sometimes there's a little bit of fall off. So let's do a light pressure test to get started. And to be clear, my setup when I'm using a tablet like this, usually I'll pull my keyboard in because I'm not used to the express keys on these tablets. I'll pull my keyboard in so I can do my keyboard shortcuts when I need to do them. I'm also missing a little bit because of how used to I am using my iPad Pro, I am missing the touch controls just a little bit. However, Mac OS really isn't a touch OS, so that's okay. I just need to adjust my thinking, get my brain right, and I should be okay. So I'm gonna do a couple tests here with just a generic brush to show you guys a little bit of the light pressure and heavy pressure differences. Now, I have been drawing for a long time, so I'm able to control the pressure of my stroke, but I have noticed a few things, specifically on the light pressure. So let's start with heavier pressure. And you can see the shape of the brush, hopefully, is indicative of how big this can get. And there are options in the tablet controls to be able to adjust your pressure curve. So if this is a lot lighter than say this stroke, that's utilizing the full size of this stamp. Okay, and now I'm gonna switch to just doing a nice light touch here. So very, very light. So I'm not sure if it's just that it's super sensitive to the touch. It is a battery free stylus as well, but I am getting a little bit of what I would call skipping in the stroke, particularly here. You can see where things have kind of fallen off a little bit. Um, I'm getting a little bit of skipping in the stroke where sometimes it's registering, sometimes it's not. Like I said, the tip of this thing is really springy. And so I'm not quite sure how to adjust that, but the fact that it's showing what's on my screen, it connected, I actually didn't have to install a driver, just download the software to control and adjust some of the settings. You can also access on tablet settings here by tapping the menu button. And that's gonna give you options for adjusting your picture, display, color, backlight, brightness, contrast, and so forth. I have not dug into those yet, as I wanted to just see what this thing is like out of the box for this initial impression hot take. I do wish the stylus had a little bit more weight and heft to it, even though when I'm drawing, I try to have a very light touch. 
I do wish that it had a lighter or sorry, a heavier weight to it. So it felt more substantial, especially if you're spending money on something like this, even though it's 180 bucks and you get a display that connects to your computer and you can draw on your computer. I do wish the stylus were a little bit heavier, but Hey, it does come with this desk desktop stylus holder thing, which is also pretty light. So that being said, those are kind of my initial impressions for this Gaumon PD 1161, this completely no name tablet um, that I think for the price again, 180 bucks, pretty good considering what it is. Um, I may look into getting a few others and seeing uh, how they compare and reporting back to you guys. But I wanted to give you at least some options. If you like sketching on a computer, you've looked at a Wacom tablet and you're not quite sure if you should buy one because of the cost. I would say if you're serious about your art and you're serious about working on a desktop or laptop using a tablet, I would not go with this option based on what I know and my previous experience with Wacom tablets, you would probably end up hating this. But for someone like me, I can work within those constraints and make it work and be cool with it. I'm gonna hang on to this just for my testing purposes. But like I said, I will look at some other options. Well, thanks guys for hanging and making it this far in the video for my hot take initial impressions of the Gaumon PD1161 tablet. Say that 10 times fast. It's super cheap for what it's supposed to do. It does that job. Does it do it the best? I don't think so. I think the pressure sensitivity is a bit concerning. There's a little bit of uncertainty about the setup flow. However, I did get it up and running in about five minutes, which frankly is, is pretty good. Um, and I would say the build quality of the hardware itself, it does feel a little bit cheap. I wish it felt heavier, which perhaps sounds a little bit counterintuitive, especially if this is something you want to travel with. I do appreciate the extra weight where I'm setting this up with my desktop Mac Pro computer and want to be able to sit and work for some time. It doesn't have a stand, so that's a negative mark if you like a stand. If however, you're like me and you just slide your hand under, it works. So that's something that you can decide if it's a deal breaker or not. Well, thanks for watching guys. You can subscribe, definitely subscribe because we go live three times a week here on sketchaday.com on the YouTube, as well as come say hi on the socials. I am at sketchaday.com on Instagram and at daily sketches on Twitter. And I'll be back with additional thoughts as I get them in a series of updates related to this tablet and frankly, other things that I've used on the channel. Check out my other reviews as well for markers and other products and more of these will be coming your way reviews for artists. Well, thanks guys. And we'll see you next time right here on sketch day.